All right, everybody, there is a mass political paradigm shift going on in Germany as even the far left is beginning to embrace a staunch pro-border security anti-immigration policy. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Before we do, once again, just a reminder that you can all get my book, Classical Versus Modern Education, for just 99 cents as part of our back to school discount. It is normally $7.95, but for a limited time, you can get it for only 99 cents as an ebook download at the link below. If you want a nice, overview of the kind of conservative reforms that are being implemented in education all over the world, this is the book for you. So make sure to download it. The link below, you can get it as an ebook or as a Kindle for 99 cents. All right. So I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the Nationalist Political Party, the alternative for Germany or the AFD. They are the fastest, well, they're becoming the fastest growing political party in Germany. I believe they're second at this point. They're a nightmare for Angela Merkel, particularly for her coalition that's uh, really just being held together by a, a string. They're threatening to completely unravel that coalition, primarily through, of course, the issue of immigration. AFD wants strict border security and enforcement, while Angela Merkel is doing everything she can to maintain a policy of globalist-inspired open borders for the entire EU, Germany uh, at the center of it. Her coalition partners, the Christian Social Union in uh, Bavaria, are abandoning that policy in droves since they're about to get voted out of office in favor of candidates for the AFD. Bavarians want to close their borders and act a strict immigration enforcement like Austria is doing. Now, just when you thought things couldn't get worse, now Angela Merkel is getting pressure from the far left of German politics, being reported that Sarah Wagenicht, who is the leader or actually the co-leader of what's called the Die Linke Party, or simply the Left Party, uh, which is Germany's far left opposition party. I believe it's the largest opposition party in the German parliament. It's very democratic, socialist, very anti capitalist, and the like. Well, now this party leader, Sarah Wagenicht, is, uh, if you can believe it, she is now leading an anti open borders movement from within Germany's left publicly calling for what's nothing less than an anti-immigration policy to be put in effect throughout the German nation. And her reasoning is rather simple. She says that open borders is not a leftist policy at all, precisely because the money spent on asylum seekers cannot at the same time be spent on providing for the needs of Germans, and particularly the German poor. There's nothing leftist about open borders. There is, by the way, open borders are thoroughly leftist, but that's besides the point. Leave that aside. But what she is doing is she's addressing the very same contradiction that other social democrats and leftist parties in Europe are starting to come to terms with. Now, we reported this back in June. Several social democratic leaders in Europe from Holland, Austria, Belgium, Italy, they all attended a meeting in Amsterdam headed by Meta Fredriksen, who's the uh, president of the Social Democrats in Denmark. And the whole purpose of the meeting was to establish the principles for a renewed immigration policy that would be the model for Social Democrats all throughout Europe. And as astonishing as it may appear as part of these principles, these center-left Social Democrats agreed that asylum seekers and refugees can no longer be automatically received by European nations, and that they, the asylum seekers and refugees, they would have to apply for entry in processing centers and camps outside of Europe, which is, of course, the position of the nationalist right, the so-called far right. And then on top of that, and this is where Sarah Wagenich and the Die Linke Party comes in, on top of all that, the European left is coming to terms not only with their own unpopularity in the eyes of more and more of the European electorate, they've been voted out of office left and right. They're beginning to come to terms with the fact that their commitment to open borders has revealed a fundamental contradiction within their own political platform when it comes to their commitment to the welfare state. More and more people recognizing that there is a fundamental contradiction 
between being advocates of mass immigration on the one hand and the survival and the integrity of the welfare state and social services on the other. You simply cannot have both. The political left simply cannot possibly claim to be both guardians of the welfare state on the one hand and proponents of unfettered immigration on the other. There was a study conducted by the Danish Ministry of Finance, and this study concluded that immigration from third world nations was costing Danish taxpayers tens of billions of euros a year. Tens of billions of euros, which of course takes away tens of billions of euros, which could be spent on welfare and public services for Danish citizens. So there's really no two ways about this. If the left is going to survive politically in Europe, it is going to have to adopt some form of what's called welfare chauvinism. In other words, welfare is for the citizens of a nation only and not free for the taking for anyone who happens to cross over their border. And folks, guess who has been arguing for welfare chauvinism for decades now? You guessed it, the nationalist populist, right, the so-called far right or radical right. The left in Europe is increasingly adopting the immigration and welfare stance that were once ridiculed, absolutely dismissed as the racist rants of the European far right. In fact, Sarah Wagenich is explicitly stating that her party's anti-immigration stance is deliberately seeking to put pressure on other parties coming from the political left to adopt the same position, to adopt a Germany first immigration policy. Folks, this is coming from the left, from Germany's political left. I just want to underscore that. The European far right, as they're called, their immigration platform is now becoming the default immigration and social services platform for virtually every party in Europe, right or left. It's called a paradigm shift. It's literally happening right before our very eyes. It is an astonishing astonishing transformation. When even leftist parties are becoming far right, you know the golden age, as Scott Adams calls it, is upon us. You see, the whole issue of traditional left and right is blurring. In many ways, it's collapsing. It's falling apart. It's no longer an issue of whether we're going to raise taxes or, or whether we're going to lower taxes by a comparable percentage point. It's no longer about whether the government is going to provide welfare services or whether we're going to start privatizing such agencies. The traditional politics of left and right are frankly over. And the new politics, and you got to get this, the new politics is not about right versus left. It's not about rich versus poor. It's not about big government versus small government. It's now about inside versus outside. It's about citizens versus ruling elites. It's about whether we're going to open up our nation and its cultures, customs, and traditions to outside influences that radically alter such cultures, customs, and traditions. That is the new politics that's emerging literally all over the world. That is why we can say here each and every day that a new conservative age is rising. And we can say that regardless of what's the latest scandals that the deep state purposely orchestrates to distract us and keep our attention away from what really is happening around the world. There is a mass paradigm shift where populations are once again returning to nation, culture, custom, tradition, religion, land, language, ethnicity, and the like as the basis for their social order. The globalist enterprise is collapsing right before our very eyes with every population reasserting national sovereignty, with every border closing and becoming secure, with every country adopting economic nationalism, with every people group re-embracing their culture, their customs, and their traditions. Globalism more and more rots out and dies, and a new post-globalist age rises. This is what's making America great again. This is what's making Germany great again, Poland great again, Brazil great again, Austria great again, Italy great again. That's what being great again is all about. It's all about dislodging our nations from the anti-cultural processes of globalization and its anti-democratic secular aristocracy.
And to the shock and disappointment of Angela Merkel, Germany is no exception. <laughs> don't, for don't forget to click on that link below and get your copy of my book, Classical versus Modern Education, for only 99 cents for a limited time. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of these awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.